Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, welcome. My name's Mike Che. I work in the Arts Division at the City of West Hollywood. I'm so lucky to have this fantastic job. Um, and we would like to welcome you to uh, tonight's WeHo Reads event. Um, there's a few thank yous that I want to uh, mention before we start. Um, I want to mention that we have our Mayor Pro Tem, John D'Amico, in the audience. And uh, yeah, right over here. <laughs> they, he does, they, all, they deserve a round of applause for all the support that they give to the arts. Um, we also have Council Member uh, John Heilman here as well. Uh, one of our fabulous arts commissioners, Don Morena Friedman's in the audience. And then I also want to thank um, Book Soup is Selling Books. So you can buy either Kim Bet Dower's book or Eloise Klein Healy's book in the lobby. So we're happy to have them here. Um, the Friends of the Library were so great, uh, graciously um, sponsored the reception. So we want to thank them and Barbara Meltzer and Linda Demers especially. And then also I want to uh, thank uh, Louise Steinman, who was formerly the curator for Allowed. Uh, they actually, she had sponsored this event as part of the Allowed series, so uh, thank you to her as well. Yeah. Um, so it is my honor to introduce this program tonight. It's a rich and thoughtful conversation about poet, the power of poetry and words between Eloise Klein Healy and uh, Kim Dower. And um, Eloise Klein Healy, I'll give you a little information about her. She's the Distinguished Professor of Creative Writing uh, Emerita at Antioch University, LA, where she also founded the MFA in Creative Writing Program. She taught in the Feminist Studio Workshop at the Women's Building in downtown LA, and she's also the author of seven books of poetry. Her work has also been anthologized widely. Um, she's the founder of Arc Toy Books, an imprint of Red Hen Press, specializing in the work of lesbian authors. And she was also the city of Los Angeles's inaugural, very first poet laureate. Mm -hmm. um, you'll hear a little bit more about uh, her poet laureateship later, but just to give you the background, um, her tenure was interrupted when she got a brain injury resulting in Wernicke's aphasia, which is a breakdown of language. And you'll hear her story tonight of what happened. And she has a new collection, which is out, uh, brand new, called Another Phase, which was just published by Red Hen Press. Uh, Kim Dower is the author of three collections of poetry, with one forthcoming this spring from Red Hen Press called Sunbathing on Tyrone Power's Grave. And she is currently the City of West Hollywood's City Poet Laureate. She has always wanted to interview Eloise Klein Healy. So please welcome me in welcoming these two friends and wonderful poets out. So um, we're going to talk about what happened to Eloise five and a half years ago. Five and a half. Right. And her amazing, the word is unprecedented recovery. That's the word. So um, as you all know, and you know, <laughs> Eloise was uh, founded the MFA program at Antioch, and she's written seven books. You heard the. If you've had her as a teacher, you know how amazing she is. And she became LA's first poet laureate. And there was a beautiful ceremony. And five months into it, she was interviewing Caroline Kennedy on the allowed stage at the downtown library. I'm sure many of you were there that night. How many of you were there? Yeah. So those of us who knew Eloise, noticed that something was going wrong on that stage. Um, was she coming down with the flu, or what, what was happening? But there was something not Eloise about what was going on. What was going on was that she was, I guess, literally attacked by encephalitis, a virus that attacks your brain, and the next morning was rushed to the ICU. 
and followed by a month yeah. of drip antiviral medication and then a battle which she'll talk some about um, that went on for quite a long time but here we are on the other side mm -hmm. with a new book and we're going to talk about that and the poems and so here we are to find out from you yeah. our beloved Eloise <laughs> what was it like that at those beginning months um, I always like to show this little skill about my brain. It's an area right back here. It just shot up like that. And everything it ticked out of there was language. Now, that also kind of just blew me out. But the language was something that was really missing because of what it had started with there. and. Um, the very morning after our meeting with Caroline Kennedy, Colleen said something to me, and I said, blah, 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 blah. Colleen thought I was joking, and that's what she said. And I said, ah, blah, 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 blah. So that going on, she decided that she ought to talk to somebody, and the, the other friend said to her, she should go to the hospital not just to um, the doctor, but you should go to the hospital because something is kind of wrong here. She's moving okay, but she's not speaking, and she thinks she's speaking. So that's a bad spot. And at that point, I was at the hospital and um, went in through all kinds of physical treatment, doing stuff to me measuring, um, sticking things through. The, the body swells up. The blood isn't going where it's supposed to. And that went on for quite a while until they figured out that it was the aphasia, and that's what was um, able to be dealt with. And that first started me just in the hospital. And after about, that was at least a month, I started to be moved to another part um, where everyone was still there to help me. I wasn't in charge of my physical being. I had to be helped by one on each side holding my hand, also where, I, where my body up here was plugged into stuff and coming along with its, its little category. Um, that was a tough time because I still didn't feel like I knew anything. But every now and then I'd say a funny thing, like, oh yeah, that hurt. And then they'd say, oh, that's a good thing you said, blah, 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 because, you know, <laughs> I was making it and I was really getting there. So that happened for a time to be put in another place that was just easier. I had my own space in a room, and I could sleep there, and I could get a bath there. Um, I could get food there. I still learned other physical parts, like how to, how to go up and down, how to go down and out. Um, and once I moved back home, Colleen was and had been gathered some other people so that they would be watching me and helping me because I could kind of get wrong and go zooming off someplace. Um, that took a bit of time. And as that was going on, um, Colleen had a meeting with me, and we were to talk to four other women. So four of them four women, well, one woman eh, talked to Colleen, one woman talked to Colleen, one woman talked to Colleen. One woman came in and said, hi, Eloise, my name is Dr. McMicken. How are you? And I turned to my friend and I said, she's the one, that's the one who should work for me because I do have a language, I've been slower 
but it got me. It said, this is the right thing. And I think that's been pretty much um, the reality of my life, to continue to choose to do the right thing. So, so this is when that's you... That's it. That, well, that's just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> so how, how long were you in the hospital for? That? Um, I was in the hospital for some weeks, but it was like a number of months. And then I got back to my own house, not to another medical treatment center, but to be um, also maintaining balance and paying some attention to what I am going to be saying. Because sometimes I would just say a really stupid thing still. Well, because words yeah. were all jumbled up. Right. So and when, some were missing. And some were missing. So right. what, uh, what you told me yeah. is that basically you lost all nouns, which yeah. for a poet, can you imagine being a poet and not having nouns? You know, it's no ideas but in things, and you have no things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you, now, if you looked at um, a vacuum cleaner, yeah. would you know it was a vacuum cleaner? No. No. Actually, I have a little section of something, if you don't mind. I would Please. read this for you. Um, I was also, oops, I am also in a whole mind for myself called aphasia, and I've been writing poems now that try and deal with aphasia. Um, so well, this, this is, is a new poem. Yeah, this is a new okay. poem. It's not printed yet, so you know, you can relax. It's easy. At this, ease. <laughs> But I'm also a little older than myself. <laughs> Aphasia is not what I can't say. I know where I am, but I can't call it a table. I also don't know how to say lamp or couch, chair, armoire, bathroom, dishwasher, no. I should first practice what's missing in the kitchen or living room. I had to practice with my sink, my 5 a.m. teapot, and the table near the microwave. Haven't even practiced the den, the office, the bedroom, and the stars above. My list needs this help. Colleen repeats it and says these words, linking the ones used before I lost it all. Mm. That's uh, how that goes. So what's amazing about that poem is now you know all those words. Yeah. And five years ago, you did not. That's right. So at the beginning, yeah, you had, bad. and you still do, have a speech therapist right. named Betty. Betty, she won. <laughs> Betty is the one. And yeah. um, she would come with flashcards. Yeah. So talk about what that was like, those beginning days. She would have flashcards and mm -hmm. how that would how that worked. Yeah, those little ones, you know, just like somebody is going to play cards with it. It had a little picture. Just one thing. And she'd say, what's that? And I'd start to say, well, no, no. and she'd say, wait, this is the big thing you always get from, from her. Wait. I'd say, it's round. It's red, something just sticking on the top. I know what it is. I know what it is. I would eat this. And the woman said, well, OK, but what do you name it for? And I had to figure it out. And she also helped me by saying A, P, P, L, E, apple. Done. That was it. But I mean, I did this like all the time. I'd get one at a time. Then sometimes she'd lay two of them down or three of them down. Then we got to six. Whoa, I know. It was like, oh my God. But I had them there, and that was what was happening every week. She's, she arrives, she gives you some. There they are. And she would put post-its yeah. 
uh, with on the, the word wall. on different all over refrigerator, the refrigerator, right. yeah. fruit, whatever. Okay. Um, did it's you? It's amazing that you can learn something by just hanging it on the wall. Well, I mean, <laughs> most of us do that now. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have aphasia, but <laughs> that's true. Your car. Yeah. Um, so, one another thing you told me, which is fascinating. Um, <laughs> All of it is fascinating, but women recover from aphasia more easily than men. Mm -hmm. And also, if you're left-handed, yeah. you have a better chance. Left-handed. Yeah. So finally, there's a there's yeah. a good thing about. Be so tell us about. We didn't that. tell the other part. Oh, was I'll, that a I'll secret? add that in. It's okay. just very tiny. No, tell the I other also part. used my right hand because I w played softball. I was a pitcher, and um, I was also, uh, I would also play, um, sometimes I'd do third base. So I did all that, too, on the lower right hand part. But you didn't tell Betty, the speech therapist, that you were a pitcher and used your right hand, because she wouldn't have wanted to hear that. But um, So your language was coming out sort of scissored by this yeah. point. Did you get frustrated when you were trying to explain yourself? Yeah. What, I, I got very frustrated because I really wanted to be writing again. You know, that's what I had done. I can't tell you the list of books I had already, but that's what I wanted to have. And I was just still missing a lot of stuff. So she said to me, okay, um, you, you should try to do a five line poem. I said, all right. How many? She said, well, I said, OK, I'm going to do um, the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, O, P, R, da, da, da. And I did 108 pages of them. I was doing two and three pages, four pages during a week because I wanted to do it. And five lines is not calling the end to earth. You know, there you are. But I also could edit them. That's one of the best parts of writing a poem, is editing it so that you know what to get rid of and you know what to have. And actually. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have a reading. And I, I'll, I just wanted right to, to, yeah. to just add to that yeah. that Eloise, um, you were trying to write and you were being, it was very frustrating. Right. So it was this Betty. Speech therapist Betty, mm -hmm. who suggested maybe if you just tackled five lines, yeah. and each poem had one word as the title, apple, right. vacuum cleaner, that would help. Yeah. And I just think, wow, what a great exercise for all of us who write. I mean, yeah. to have that structure. Hey. So the five lines and the one word, and um, Eloise has a brand new book with these poems, and she's going to read some. Uh, and I, I, well, I was going to say it after, but I think you've created a new form, which is half a sonnet and double the impact, the Eloise sonnet. Do you like that? Yeah, I love it. So, so OK, <laughs> half the lines and double the impact. So the Eloise, heck? read to us from, oh, your, okay. from your brand a new couple. book. OK. Well, you, do you want to go to the podium and do a reading, a little a poetry reading? How about it? Yeah, let's have a. Um, this is the book, which is called Another Phase. And um, I had some plans about trying to work to get this book published. It was still a goal for me. Um, and I also got to be able to draw or to find this and to make this be what it looks like. So it is another phase. It's a very dark part, and there's a part where the light has come ahead and is still showing. And I think that's the, the tool about what has happened to my brain to be able to bring me back. So here's one called Another Phase. It's hard for me to read the LA Times. I want to relearn to reline part of me. How did my brain twist? How did the whack of it phase me? Every page, every word blank. Okay. Um, 
we're going to move right over to another one called Attitude. I know about the word, quote unquote, information. Now I've learned I broke my mind. My word smeared me, aphasia. My speaking could not count names or rhyme. The, quote, I, me, much, unquote, of mine. Gone. Lost. Okay. This is a poem that I'm going to use, but I'm going to use it as the last one at all of the time today. It's called Prize. Ho hum is just a word, but what the body knows is written down, and language is the prize. But what more could you want? Surprise yourself and never surmise. Anything to say? Are you still here with me, Mamacita? Um, okay. Let's talk about O. Oh. Take a deep breath. Today is over. Lots of names, places, and how I listen. What I don't say. Thank you. Wonder. Full of wonder. Ouch. Wonder what it means to be full of feelings. What about how I know, how I ask about pain, but sorrow? Tell? Everywhere. How haiku chimes, the old bell heavy. On the rhymes, a word comes and sings it too. Any day, any air, haiku everywhere. Does that make any sense? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Sometimes I get in trouble with the word haiku. It has to have a certain number of syllables every time you use it. But I didn't do that. Up. Another day, but am I duller? Nothing done and not a dollar bill for every hour. Happiness will help if help could find my mind and smooth it all. Problem. When first I wrote a poem, I couldn't change anything. Didn't plan to edit or write another quote unquote, brain fry was my reality time. Step two wasn't there yet. Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> okay, fur. What's it fur, he said. What's it for, I thought. Why I care is where I am. But did I remember the wild animal? The black bear? Does that make any sense? Yeah. Good. Mm, OK, we're going to try tips. Oh, the fingertips that touch. But this means less than possible. Your body parts don't behave or feel like you've been on TV or smooch my lips like dry blood. I want to run my fingers perfectly through your hair. Maybe you should laugh. <laughs> OK. Amazing. It's about analyzing. Zzz. Blank spots in the brain try again and again to name what one had said before, handed from a new beginning, waiting for the ground, the head, to meet. Okay.
going for words. Maybe this is what happens when you start to get involved with poems or poetry, because it's really about words, how they play. Okay, pencil, pen, power, patience. Can I begin plan or plain or please? There's no beginning or end. Anything now, new, native, nonchalant, nervous. I know more about me now. Aphasia. Hmm. <sighs> Miss Dancing in the Dark. Oh, Miss Dancing in the Dark, when did you choose me? Perhaps the day I, before I found myself let alone all the sweethearts I kept losing. Yes, I often wanted to believe I'd kiss and find the heart I'd been losing. Oh, here's a poem for my friends, Marie and Roby. More about the best, you bet. Not a simple word or wit or wisdom, well. No, it's more about love. Not lingering, but living again, again. Thank you, girlies. You want me we'll to talk, chill Let's out? chat a little bit about those poems. Okay, <clears throat> chat. I'm leaving and I'm chatting. So have a little water. So we get it that Eloise had an assignment to write a five-line poem. So that pre I mean, we have a million questions. I do about that anyway. Like, did you? Will you listen to Betty? And you were. I, it wasn't that I listened. It's that she told me. <laughs> <laughs> a bit bossy, Betty. Yeah. I think they mm -hmm. also call. So, so when you, well, part of why. So many of us think you had this yeah. amazing recovery is for poetry, is because you had to get back to it because right. you're a poet and the words needed to come somehow, they were gonna come. So did you feel this great relief with this assignment from Betty when you first went in to write your first five line poem with one title? Did you feel great relief? Was it frustrating? Did, t tell us about that experience. Both of you. Um, it, it was not about feeling bad or being blocked or something. It was about letting go. I had to say five lines. Okay, that means I have to deal with that. And that's going to mean I have to write it better, but I just can't flop it around. It's got to be in that little box. But first it has to start out everywhere, and then it can go in the box. That's how that was. Had you ever written that way before? No. OK. So this was not only relearning words, yeah. but discovering a new way right. to create a poem. Did it excite you and surprise you, or what was that feeling? Well, I, um, you know, I had lots of other types of poems that I had in books, and often they moved around a little bit and uh, taught another level of skills and feelings. Um, for example, if we hold that one up, this one called Artemis and Echo Park. This was something that I worked on for about four years to be able to say, I'm going to write about <gasps> That's okay. You don't have a computer yeah, there. The water so everywhere and how the world did shrink. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So, um, I um, I had I have had a feeling even when I'm writing more than one five lines 
There are other rules for me about that um, to make sure that things don't just keep building up but never balancing things. That's, that's always a problem. Um, s stuff that always continues to find itself, which feels to me like that's what I think I know I'm doing, but it's not. I should just put that piece of paper over here and just let it rest. Just other things, you have to be busy. I think it's also part of something that I always tell to everybody. Everything is in a circle. It's all in there. Whatever you have, it's what you have. And you get to put it together and choose what it's like. I had a game once where I had one of those, um, what are they Shuffle called? Book? No, it's a little s circle. Oh, oh checkers? And you go like that. Marbles. Yeah, marbles. Exactly. Marbles. There's a little circle of them, and there's some out there, and the kid comes and goes, tuh, tuh, and you win, and then you're happy. <laughs> You've had fun, and you're such a special person. And, uh, and one time I went and bought the big one, this big That's around, and I got it, and I went there, and I thought, okay, I'm going to beat them all. And it went, and they just go, poop, poop. I just beat them. And, I, and then I won. I still own that piece. <laughs> Thank well, you. Oh, you're welcome. All right. I will, I'll play with you sometime. Okay. So here's, here's one I love. It's just called Read. Read. I used to read faster than I read now. I used my thoughts and let them go. Now, before I read, I sing. <laughs> So, I mean, to me, it's like a little gem. It's like a bir little bird. I yeah. love them. Right. Now, you go in there. Betty says, go in there. Give me five lines. Yeah. She like a coach, like, I want three <laughs> with five lines by noon. Or did yeah. she? D did she? No, I did it myself, okay. three by three of them in the morning. Three in the morning. Yeah. Now, when you did read, uh -huh. for example, yeah. did it just plop out like this. I mean, we all know the feeling of when they come out, and it's like, oh my god. Yes. And then when you're struggling, was this a struggle or just a plop? It was both. You know, I would have ideas. Sometimes I'd have an idea, and I'd start to think about it, and I'd start to write it, and then I'd discover that I'd just get to that part, and then I would stop. Eighteen times trying that it would stop. And then one morning I woke up, bam, du -du 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 -du, filled out two more pages, and it was perfect. It was like, oh my god, I've just been spinning around in here working all the time. It's that left hand. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? So um, It's poems. It's poems. Um, you going to read another I'm one? I'm going to read another. Can oh, I cool. read another one? Oh, yeah. So flashlight, because this is when the I, I wrote down, losing nouns, how can a poet lose nouns? So flashlight, I guess, you found flashlight. Yeah. Fascinating. Only by learning. <laughs> so, when did the flashlight get its name? Didn't have one yet. That time was 2013. I have a new word exactly now. Not only the thing I hadn't said for three years, now saying and using the flashlight. Big deal, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you can really just read this oh, book and man. see the story of Eloise's. Oh, it's no. almost like the words are coming like birds. <laughs> like, they're just, was that what it was? Like, it oh was. my god, I've got a flashlight? Oh, okay, I'm just... I was sitting there with that goddamn thing on the table all the time, and I'd look at it and I'd think... <laughs> okay, so I want to know what it felt like when this word came to you. This okay. word is particularly special today. The title is Asshole, is what this is called. <laughs> so I want to know when that came to you. And so, Asshole. As wild as you could be, you drank a ton per day. Today you climbed your uphill steps and crossed your street, just weaving. Ended up just an asshole. Maybe less. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't so. me, you know. It was the guy I knew. Oh, that no, was so incredible. Poems are not autobiographical. Oh, I know. Yeah. So, um, did you make yourself laugh when you wrote this? Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. But I also remembered 
how bad it had been seeing the guy because I knew him and he was, I would go to his office down below and um, he would wash my hair and trim, cut my hair and do that kind of stuff. And then one, one time that he was there, I remembered and I said, what are you drinking? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, a lot tomorrow. It's words like that. It wasn't my aphasia. It was him. <laughs> it was <laughs> his aphasia. I couldn't believe it. So I said, you know what? I'm leaving. I am not cutting your hair anymore. You're going to hurt yourself and other people, but I can't stay here and do it. So that was why I had that poem. Well, so... It was a little... Your sense of humor. Yeah. So we're talking about the words coming back. and But um, when we were talking the other day, you, you were laughing at my, <laughs> some of my jokes, you know, because, and um, I thought you have, your sense of humor is completely <laughs> I there. I do. So, but then Colleen mentioned, well, it, that took a while to come back. Mm -hmm. That's, that was like <laughs> the last part. So talk about that. Did you feel like, I want to laugh, but I'm not feeling it? Or did some, one day you just got it? Can you remember about that? Or? Well, I think the biggest problem is losing the word. You know, losing a word. To have a feeling about something, and you're just struggling like crazy to see what it is. Like, what color is it? Not like, is it gigantically yellow and also a little green, and therefore it's blah, 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 blah. No. It's a color. What color is it? And that had to get added. Just like that discussion that you had, uh, Betty, who gave me this little thing. That's where I got that little color. And I had to find the word for that. It's a, it's a commonly part what aphasia does to have things in there and you're just holding them and it's not making that language come into there properly. I still have some parts of that. Yeah. Okay, so you, um, for how long were you writing the five line poems? Like two years or? Mm -hmm. So like two years. Now you read us one that is recent, so it's longer. Has right. Betty given you her permission for this new <laughs> form? I didn't have to Are ask you sneaking her. In behind? I didn't have to ask her and no one would have cared. Okay. So Betty has given you free reign now. Well, I'm only so, getting a second one. Re read us a second longer one. Brand this is, new. This is called Pleasantry, and it's in April 11th, 2017. So that's a while ago. Because this one is really being done by me in that area where I'm just still stumbling to get myself going. Pleasantry. When I tried to laugh, it was almost not a problem. My helpers could swing and sway and get me okay to my bed. I'd had to talk and talk a walk, and it's true. I could be so funny. My hellos seemed meaningful to me, and I could say something normal. I'd think, some body parts, though, were good, and some were just missing. Then I was wearing my little, quote unquote, out jacket. But smart as a brain, somebody wrote my name on the L.L. Bean tag, Healy. Who put it there? Who lost me? Mm. Beautiful. Mm. So I love this one, too. Um, oh, you had a more of it? I, well, I, I love. Um, so this is a little, uh, your little autobiography. You want to uh -huh. read this one? Okay. Born. Oh. Born in El Paso, Texas. Driven down to South Dakota. Later, Ray and Carmen moved to Sioux City, then Rems in Iowa. And we first, a mile from town. I loved first and first and first. 
So we should all write an autobiography in five lines called Born. <laughs> that's the assignment that will help with you Betty want. like that. I, I mean, that's not easy to do. So I want to know. Mm -hmm. Now, just tell me the truth, Eloise. Okay. How many drafts for Born? How um, many times did you rewrite that? That was probably four or five to pull those parts together, you know, when, um, because I also had a lot of experience of what had happened with these people. Um, my father and my, my mother were waiting there in El Paso because he was going to leave. And instead, before he left, which was also they decided that he was going to go and work with Jack's jackasses, that type of thing, if you can use that language. And he said, no, I don't want jobs like that. He had better ideas. So they said, OK, uh, you can go to Burma. OK. And off he went. This was all in the first draft. Yeah. So she had to cut all that out. Off he went. And he was in Burma at that time where the goal was to get the road up and over so China can be connected. Well, the mountains had no roads, and that was the goal. And where Ray worked with it was they also brought some Jeeps. They had put them there, you know, through the gigantic boat and put a lot of Jeeps in there, but only as boxes. So when they got there, they also had some problems. Some of the Jeeps didn't fit some of the tires. <laughs> and so Ray's big job was to reestablish how to fix up a Jeep, which is pretty tough. But um, it was one of the things that he enjoyed so much to say, yes, there was something to happen about doing something that works decently. And that's the way he was in his life. He decided that he, that's the way he wanted to be. He lived from being eight years old, and that's when he had to go out and start to find other jobs of his own. So, yeah, it was tricky. Yeah, well, you got that into five lines here. Yeah, I, mean, I know. It's a lot that's... <laughs> was a good one, though. It's a good one. So um, here's the poem that I'd love to know at what, when you wrote this one, at what stage in these. Okay. So it's, this one has longer title, Here's What I Said. My brain needs me to knock out the haziness. Life is all kinds of feeling. Don't cut the brain out, work on it. Just keep working each day. Was that a mantra to yourself? Was that? Well, I think it was the rule. You know, like, how, does, how, are things, how are things working? And for me, and a lot of other people who are here today, you also know you've lost a couple of drops, or something really went wrong, or you had some physical effect that was medical, or mental, or psychological, or how many ever you want to feel. Those parts um, need to work the models together. And it's tough, you know? It's really tough. Um, Did when I felt that I was to still learn how to write, I knew that I loved it, but I knew it was a job. I mean, I knew it. That's how we live. Do you think the poetry, being a poet, healed you, basically? Was your guiding? Yeah. Yeah, I think what, what it really worked at was language. Because language was all of that stuff that we started out with, even. One word, that's a piece of language. And they can be gigantic, even as one language, or you can just say, shit. Well, OK, there's a lot of meaning there. <laughs> <laughs> but there are a lot of other meanings that can kind of float around a little bit. Yeah. 
was, is there, what, is there a difference? So you know the poem feeling, yeah. you're writing a poem, right. the feeling. You know, for some people, I guess it's frustration. Many, it's euphoria, that feeling yeah. when it comes through you. Right. I'm sure you had it when you, before the aphasia. Yeah. When you're writing these, do you have that same feeling? Is that a blissful feeling of making the poem? Do you, so, well, sometimes. And sometimes it's tough. Or sometimes it's sad. Like, do I want to say this sad thing? Shall I go ahead and write it? Do I have to live with that? Because I suspect that many of you do live with that. Yeah. So I think that's really kind of how the feeling gets in there. Do you think that in writing these, you were working out not only the words, yeah. the words were coming to you and you were working out the words on the page, but also your feelings of anger and upset and s grief from having gone through this experience? Yeah, right. Yeah, so that book. Mm -hmm. Would you like to read us one of my favorite poems from, oh. from, the, from your book? I'm sure you all have Artemis and Echo Park. Um, so this is. Do you have a famous page? Well, I we like this. We like the Valley of the Amazons. Oh, okay. Will you read this for sure. us? It's an older Eloise poem. My goal about this one was to use um, a certain section in the city. So that's what it really was about. The Valley of the Amazons. She went to the grocery store with me in North Hollywood, wearing a black tank top and no bra. We stood together in line. Everybody was looking at her breasts and her aviator glasses, her hair slicked back, and one strand falling over her eyes. I felt like we were in a clearing, ready to mount the horses. The men stood at a distance. Our nakedness was nonchalant, connected to horses and skin warmth. We would ride off when the checker tallied our purchases, and the clearing would smell like horses the rest of the day. Mm. So yeah, that's kind of a place. Do you ever read these older books to remind yourself of the way you wrote before, do you? What do you feel when you read the older poems? I like uh, the fact that I really decided to work in a clear place together because I wanted to deal with living in that part of the city so that I knew what the feelings mean, meant. So immediately I also hipped into Spanish and used the words in Spanish as also feel, not just feelings, but meanings. What do you mean by f that? Maybe I could find one. Um, well, what if your, all your words came back to you in Spanish when you started getting better? <laughs> That's what I mean. There are some words here that I could that be grabbing be one of my right? little Spanish words. Uh, I maybe can't do that. Well, but I can do this one little thing. Please. There are some words in here that you'll know of. Advice like that. The woman had the boy by the hand. He was maybe nine years old. He was dirty. His mouth was smeared and his stomach stuck out where his shirt ended and his pants began. In the 60s, like Jackie Kennedy, a nappy texture. But this one sagged from its shoulders her shoulders. She held the boy out to me and said, could I give her something so she and her baby could have breakfast? I gave her a dollar. She smiled. No teeth on the right side. She looked me up and down. Honey, she said, them wind things blowing in the road, don't walk through them anymore. She and the boy went to Burrito King. I drove out to the valley to my therapist. My daughter is little to spend for advice like that. 
Mm. Yeah. Oh. Well, I think we're, we were going to get to a point where people might ask some questions. Aye, aye, you aye. feel like asking some questions? <laughs> um, I just wanted to read one thing to... Sure. So, four years ago, you had just been out of the woods for a year. Yeah. You were still deep in it. And Pat Morrison interviewed you, yeah. I believe, for the LA Times. And she said, um, in this, she said, now her goal, that's you, now your, her goal is to reconnect with poetry and to reinvent her life after the brainstorm jumble of illness. I kept all the parts, Eloise said gleefully. I still could use some more. <laughs> so what do you think? Did you get more? Are you, are you, are you, uh... Yeah, I think, I think so. And I don't feel it problematically, like, is this the wrong thing to do? No, it's more like, what time can I be doing this one? Um, how do I want to build this up? Uh, I've got about 200, well, I'll, I'll go a little lower. I'll say I have about 150 pages of things I've already written. They aren't edited yet. But I like how that works, where there's both my brain and there's both my missing part, and how do they all float together with that? I think she kept no. a lot. Would you agree? I would say so. For sure. <laughs> so um, you guys have to have some questions, I would imagine, right? Just raise your hand if you have a question. Oh. Well, this is pegged to what Kim just said, and also. Uh, What's your uh, name, sir? John, John Kalish. How do you and do? Very glad to be here. Thank you. Um, when you spill the water, you seem to reflexively re recite, you know, water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. It resonated for me because it was a poem I was assigned, I think, in sixth grade to memorize. Was that one of the things that you re relearned, or was that part of your memory that came back as you kind of rebuilt? yourself as a poet. Is it by choice in some way or another, or by force of habit? I'm curious. Um, I know that I had a lot from the time I was two minutes old. All my early life was very much included with me to the degree that my my mom and dad were thinking of trying to have another baby besides me, but then something was proven wrong to my mother, and she had to just cut all that part out. So that left me, and I think as an interesting thing, both that man and that woman loved me, and they thought that I was important enough. It wasn't that there were 10 of them or 15 of them or, you know, and I'm not kidding about that. That's a big deal. But um, they gave me a lot of attention. So, you know, when I was first trying to learn to tie my, sh my um, laces here, I didn't know how, I was very young, and the dad was starting to show me, like, here's how you do this, you do this, you do this. And I kept going, but I can't. And finally he said, I, I said, this is not the way I would do it. I, so I turned it around, because I was going left to right and not right to left. And he said, you're right. That's good, you can do all these now. Okay, go practice this one. And I was really happy. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I learned it. Because I'm a left-handed lace maker, I guess you'd have to call it. So what yeah. you learned back in the early yeah. days yeah. stuck with you. Right. Well, my sister was left-handed and still was those uh -huh. days where you were kind of meant to be irregular, yeah. not in a good way. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy, I got in trouble when I was uh, um, my first year at school. Um, I was supposed to go and draw something on there with the chalk. You know, you had to put something like an A or a T or something. So I reached up to do it, and the girl came over to me and went, what are you doing? I said, I'm writing the T. She said, no, you don't use this. You use this. 
you stand up here and write some of them. And I thought, oh. So when I got home, I told my mom and dad, I said, he just wasn't, the lady there wasn't understanding what I needed. I had to do this. So she went in and talked to the principal, who said, OK, you're right. Mom gets to do it, and you get to do it, and they can't slap you, <laughs> which was pretty nice, you know. Yeah. Another question, anybody? No questions? Is that possible? We have a question. Here. you yeah, when, hi. back in the day. I'm curious um, if you make use of meditation uh, to help you uh, find the words and, and when you do find these words, are there occasions where you find them and then they disappear? To do what at the end? Of you find the words and then they disappear. Uh, how does meditation, if you use meditation at all, to, to, to grab hold of these words, yeah. in I a think, sense. I think maybe I don't use meditation in the way I've understood people meditating, you know, sitting still and doing that way. I did have a period of time in, in, suppo in su having to sit and learn to do that. I did do that. But I, I became really a lot more interested in... Um, writing and using the words. That was more interesting to me. Although also what kind of got in touch with me a little bit was I learned how to use um, ink with um, Chinese calligraphy. calligraphy. Yeah. And I love that. But what the problem for me with that one was using left-handed works differently and it gets you a little bit uncomfortable with the people who are doing it like this and it's getting the right dip and it goes that way. I'm trying to <laughs> squeeze it in that place and it was a little tougher. But basically after a while I didn't care. I just liked doing it, mm. learning how to do it. It was another way. Yeah, that was helpful. But thanks. Yeah. So and Eloise yeah. says, oh, Yvonne. 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 Oh, we have two Yvonnes in the house here. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, we'll have this question and then, and then Yvonne's question. Do you have all your memory back? Do you have your memory, all of your memory back? I can't oh. remember. Who, yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> yes. Who knows? <laughs> My God. <laughs> That's a wonderful answer. Oh. That's a wonderful answer. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know, you know, there are uh, certain things I don't remember, but it's only because I forget where the mountains were in Montana. That kind of thing. Who can I remember, remember where the remember, mountains are in Montana? I don't remember the name of that title. But, yeah, yeah there, I think there are a lot of other things that actually end up in my books because I remember them. And that's what's stuck in there that way. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks, I'm, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, so I have a question. Hi. When we were talking, you were talking about the struggle of writing and the enjoyment that you get still from doing the poems. Mm -hmm. But um, I think what Kim was saying too was, or I would like to know is about when, when you get in the zone, when you're all, this poem is coming, this is how it's going, I'm doing my thing, it's all happening at the zoo right now. Yeah. And do you still get does, does that happen more and more for you with the book coming and putting it in order and doing the whole nine yards? I think I'm more hooked out to a bunch of those happening. Do you know what I mean? Not just like one. In the beginning, I had more often that little time of, that, 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 oh, you goodness. know, you go, you go get it. Yeah. Um, I have a little bit more about um, I have something, I don't even bother putting down one word. It isn't really bothering me that much. I've got things working about, uh, for example, the um, aphasia. 
you know, reading about that one. What happened in the brain? How does that kind of stuff come about? And then anything about the language is already just wanting to be there in that way. So you're working on different things at once? Yeah. I think that Yvonne's asking, are you in the zone and you're focused and concentrated on this one poem? Or you're saying that you're kind of across the board, working on yeah. different things at once? Yeah. Is that what you're? Yeah, so it's, that's what the process at the moment. Right. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Because, yeah, because you know, if you've started a new thing, Somebody might say to you, well, hey, blah, blah, blah. And then they're adding their 10 other steps, which you get to see that it's free. You know, go, go help with that so one. So your mind jumps around a little bit? Does it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK, well, that sounds That's like okay. fun. That's OK. It's good. It's like, OK, now the questions are all coming up suddenly. Oh, mama. The questions are I have a question. Hey. Uh, so uh, Eloise, you seem very accepting of the whole experience. And I'm wondering, it's kind of a two-part question. A, if you made a cosmic interpretation of why this happened to you, and if you did come to peace with this whole thing, how did you do that? I think I came to, um, I'm not sure if I know if it was peace, but I think what I know was another part of me always wanted to work and keep it going. Even when I was little, it's a part of me that was involved, and I'm sure it's with my parents, that being engaged is of good help. Even if you mean learning to make a cookie, or are you gonna do something about NASA? I think it's, um, I, th I think I was just really lucky that, that my family, they were helping me. They liked me. It wasn't that they were just helping me. They liked me. They wanted to do things. And I think that this is a, a situation that you often will find with somebody who's having a problem. Something is stuck in there, and it might be something they know about, and they don't want to deal with it. Also, they learn about it, and then they want to do something about it. If I can call you for just uh, two seconds, Kavanaugh, who is set up to be the Supreme in the Supreme Court. And along with him came a woman who were graduates and workers at Stanford University, came there, and she said, I want to say something. I know it's really hard for me, but this man was really drunk. I was at the same age level. They were drunk. They grabbed us. They took me in the bedroom. They wanted to just squirrel all over me to see if they could get in a sexual thing with them. and. Eventually, she was able to get away a bit. The guy was so drunk anyway, he was having a hard time. He, of course, he has said he's never done that. Take it how you carry that one. Because many people now realize, oh, somebody's, somebody remembered that and wanted to say something about it. What her point of view was, I never forgot it. I carried it. Painful and nasty. And she said also one interesting thing. Because I got to be able to come to Stanford, I'm in an amazing situation, and yet I'm still dealing with this pain. So I'm sure we know that. But sometimes, you know, if you, if you don't want it to be locked away, you make that first step, and you're taking a great amount of chance. But that's what you do. So memory <clears throat> isn't always so great to have. Yeah, really. Um, though, when I, I, this isn't really a dead straight answer to your question, but it's certainly part of how Eloise's mind goes. 
probably when she's writing, and it's going in different directions, but different words or ideas bring up, conjure different feelings. So, okay, well, who wants to end on Kavanaugh? So I, I would say, but let's have one other question and we'll end on something else. Um, <laughs> okay. And then we'll, then we've done it, don't you, do you think? I yeah. think, and, and Eloise is gonna, wants to sign her beautiful new book, which are for sale out there, right? I'm gonna get some water first She needs some all. water, but <laughs> is there one last question? Um, yes. Yeah, I, ha I have the mic. There you go. Hi, Eloise. Uh, my name is Kelly Carson. I am a West Hollywood resident and um, now admirer. Um, I wanted to hear a little bit more about that poem with the woman with the black tank and the hair and the, in the grocery store and sort of how, like, what, where, where, where were you? Like, where were you at? What happened? In, in that, that, during that time. Um, actually, I have another friend who's in our back area over here, my friend Marie. We were um, all young friends together, and I met, I often visited her where she lived, and um, I drove over my park, and I could come up at, in this second level of this pink house set up. And when I got there, I'd visit. And then one day when I was there, um, oh, that's fine. I got one. Did I just pour it all? Oh. Voila. Um, when I got there, I, I was sitting down. Um, Marie was doodling around there. It's a very tiny little place. Our little house was about as big as that box over there. And I was sitting at the corner, and a, a young woman walked through. And I saw her, and what I actually said about this was, she hit me through the wood set, like that kind of thing. Something just came along my head and hit me. Boom. Boom. And when I looked at her, I thought, this is the one. I totally love her. <laughs> Be what could I say? You know, we, we have this idea that we all gather little ideas and I keep working on them and working on them. This one was one of those. <coughs> and she was very sweet with me. We actually went to a little part during that afternoon down there a couple of times and we'd sit and chat. And of course, nobody would wear their clothes like, where's your um, clothing? Oh, forget it. Just sit here and lie down. I'm like, we'll just chat. And I thought, oh, what does this really mean to me? But that's the way it happened. And then she just wanted to, me to do all kinds of work for her and go pick up the car for her. And finally, I thought, this is too crazy. I mean, how, how crazy can I be? I can't. I have to stop it. But I did have a couple of other people like that too, and I was learning to stop it. See, yeah. she didn't forget too much. No. That, that, there's the good. And those are, those are hard to write in five line poems with just one word, but. Yeah. Um, one more word. One more word. You we, guys. We you, lived together now for 30 years. You think? Yeah. <laughs> And Eloise just celebrated her 75th birthday. Okay? Yay. So that's pretty fabulous. So anyway, a lot more poems to come. And um, thank you so much for, for listening to Eloise's story thank and you, being honey. here yeah. to hear her beautiful new poems. And uh, it's a whole new writing process. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to try you. it yeah, for five cool. lines. Um, Great. I'm kind of excited to try that. So that's your assignment. Five lines, <laughs> one word. And we'll see you next week. And um, thank you for being here. Thank you.